what's up y'all hope you had a good week since our last video today we're gonna be making leaf pendants I live in New England and it is starting to get cold out gotta get bundled up to go out to the studio so right there you see me bouncing that colored glass in the flame there that's called flame beating being as it's so cold out that glass has been sitting there overnight it's below freezing so you don't want to just throw it right in the hot torch even though borosilicate glass is pretty resilient to stress better safe than sorry So the first thing we're going to do is start a gather. It's when we heat the glass up and let it kind of fall down onto itself and it just balls up. You can make it as big as you want, just keep melting it down. This is the first step to making a leaf pendant. But a lot of these techniques you can use in other things as you progress in your work. So these things may seem simple right now, but you're going to use them forever if you keep glass blowing. If you guys like these videos, comment below and let me know what you think. Hit that like button. Also check out our social media. Film and Fire on Parlor and Facebook and we're Film and Fire Art on Instagram and also check out our website we have photography and glass uh, www.filmandfire.com so I have this gather about as big as I want it so we're gonna mash it down you want to mash it down pretty flat, but not all the way flat. Otherwise, when we go to put our lines in it, there won't be enough glass to make it look nice. So now I'm heating that flattened gather up, attaching a little punty, and we're going to pull it out. And you can see that leaf shape starting to form. We're going to take the Bear Grylls knife that my dad got me at a yard sale and you just carve right in there. Start in the middle, try to make sure you get it nice and center. Start whacking those lines in there. Sometimes you gotta reheat it. It's better to take your time and have to reheat it a time or two if necessary. Uh, sometimes I can get a whole side in one heat. See, I'm pushing in the ends of those lines, those leaf lines. It gives it a nice little touch I found. You can leave it as it was too. Looks nice either way. So now I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. It gets a little crooked when you start mashing it with a knife. So we're going to do the other side now. Same deal. Make sure you come in at a slight angle. Push down hard. Reheat if necessary. Working with glass is so much fun. Like I said in my last video, it's uh, there's a learning curve for sure, but nothing you can't figure out. So you see, you kind of push up on that edge and roll it in up to the top. 
you don't want to just push straight in from the side or it kind of bulges on the bottom and the top and it looks funny. So at this point our pendant is pretty much formed. Now we're going to put the bale or the neck on it so you have something to hang it off of. Now you normally want to keep your tools out of the flame but with metal tools if they're cold you can hit them with a little heat first so it doesn't crack your glass. So we're going to heat this up and pull the rest of that rod right off. And now we're going to kind of gather that neck down into a ball and flatten it out. Now I messed up here in a minute. I normally use the tweezers to hold these, but I'm using my mashers, which I'm going to need, so I have to switch hands. So same deal we started with on a smaller scale. Just gathering that glass down onto itself. Not too far. You don't want it to uh, look short and stubby on the neck. It's good to have a set of tools on either side of you. I have picks that I have one for my left hand, one for my right hand, because I'm always using those tungsten picks. But it gets expensive for some of these tools if you want doubles. So same deal. Heat it up, mash it down. We're going to pull that out slightly, just like we did the leaf. Just gives us a little extra to work with so we can wrap that around. Still have room for someone to put a string or a chain through that bale. If you guys have specific video requests, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'm trying to take you from, uh, you know, some very basic things into more, uh, more detailed pieces. But as you'll see, even with this leaf, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the techniques that are used to make this, I started humming here for some reason. <laughs> A lot of techniques that are used to make this leaf you can use for other things like a scorpion the body is very similar uh, to this leaf. And that'll do it for that one. Nice amber purple color. As that cools off it's going to look real nice. Put it right in the kiln, 1050 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's make another. I'm still in the process of tweaking my studio. I got a mini torch recently that's been helpful. Just allows you to get in there and do more detailed, precise work. This torch, this uh, Bethlehem Bravo torch that I'm working with, gets a pretty precise flame. But it's nice to be able to move the torch around with your hand with the mini torch. I don't have a foot pedal. A lot of uh, a lot of guys have foot pedals which makes it very easy to switch from a, a big flame to a small flame. Uh, maybe Santa will bring me one. So as you can see we're doing the same thing as the first one just heating that up and gathering it down. You try to keep the ball on top of that stick as best you can but as it gets heavier and it's molten it can kind of flop over. That's alright, you just keep heating it it'll work itself out. Now as you can see the the ball is up, the gather is in the air, and my hand is down. 
as I get it to the size I want, I'm gonna start bringing my hand up. And that'll help me round it out nice and even so it's not slumped over. Gotta mash it down again. This one came out pretty nice. So now we're gonna heat up, kinda heat up the bottom half of that leaf. Because we want the top half to keep its form and we want it to stay decently wide. But heat up the bottom half, put that cold seal punty on there, and pull it out. Perfect. You'll find with glass you want to kind of be ambidextrous. Be able to do the same motions with either hand. It just makes things easier. Otherwise you have to kind of get weird angles. Gives more of a chance for messing up. So see as you're pushing those lines down in there, if you if you mash the leaf too thin when you're mashing it out from your gather, you just don't get that definition. It doesn't look quite as nice. It took me a bit to figure that out. There's not really a lot happening in the public glass scene up here in New England right now, especially with COVID. So a lot of the stuff I'm relying on you other YouTubers. Keep those videos coming. Shout out to Torch Talk. Making some very helpful videos for everybody. A lot of people want these leaves. They're fairly simple, but there's something special about them. So same technique here, you kind of push in and roll it up the side, and that's about it. I'm gonna put a neck on this. Like I said, remember to check out my website, www.filmandfire.com. I do outdoor landscape photography as well as glass, so you can find both those things there. Comment below and let me know what you want to see me make next week. Heat that bottom half, pull it down. See that punty, that glass that was in my right hand, that breaks off real easy when it's a cold seal. A cold seal is when one piece of glass is hot and the other's cold. When you put it together, it kind of forms a temporary bond, but it breaks off easy. So you use that to your advantage in some regards. Other times you want it to stay and never come off again. That's a hot seal. You want to get both pieces of glass equally hot before you put them together. A 
attach that bale, you want to heat it up real good where it, it meets the leaf. So the glass is all fluid and happy, so there's no cracking. And there you go, y'all. I appreciate you watching this. Into the kiln. And that's all she wrote. Alright y'all, God bless.